You are now checking out the Blue and Lou Show right here on That's Enough.com. That's Enough.com is the Blue and Lou Show. Yes. And today we got Rosenberg in the building. You guys are lucky to have a celebrity in my status. Yo, on the, show. the living legend. I know. Talk about it. Hi, first Star of, all, of screen and speaker. First of all, we got a little <laughs> beef going on. I don't know if you know it. We do? Yeah, we do. Why? Because a couple of times, like <clears throat> when you had Chris Jericho up here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you don't email me and let me know. Hey, yeah, I, I got this guy coming up and, you know. I'm yeah. No, I don't really share <laughs> information like that. Uh, yeah, there are a few people at the radio station who actually care when we have uh, wrestling people up here. And I, I forget. I got to be honest. I just forget. Right. And then I, people all come in and mark out and lose their mind. And, you yeah, know, I, I, like, I, I like the wrestlers to feel comfortable. Yeah, I don't mark out. You guys yeah, right. I'm sure you wouldn't. <laughs> hey, you introduced me to some more well, Joe and MVP, and I handed that pretty well, didn't I? You did, but I mean, Jericho's on a different level, let's be honest about no, it. No, no, I'm very good with that kind of stuff. Everyone says that until they're in the situation. Unless, I, it's, unless it's like Triple H and Jay Z and stuff like that, then, you know. Tri you give him Triple H Jay Z status. Yo, Ooh. that's my favorite wrestler of all time. Wow. Like, growing up, that was the guy I wanted to be. He's Triple H is very good. I just watched some uh, Triple H stuff on the network this weekend. Yeah, I did. Was reminded of how of how good he is. I was watching that Kingdom Come. His DVD. Yeah. Oh no, no. I, I was just watching. Uh, I watched his um, him and uh, wow. Why am I spacing out all of a sudden? Um, who did he have the three phases of hell match with? Sean. No, it wasn't. It wasn't with Sean. It was with Austin. Oh, Austin. It was him and Austin. This is when around the time when they said that Triple H ran over um, Austin in the car backstage. Oh, so when not, he hired Rakishi to do it? Yeah. Rake okay, got it. I didn't watch it in context of the storyline. I just watched the match itself because um, I wasn't an active fan in 2001. So I, I've been I've gone back to watch all that stuff. Right. And that match was phenomenal. Who's your, who's your favorite wrestler of all time? Um, Brett and Macho Man. Are my two favorites of all time. Okay. Probably well, I don't know what. Probably Macho. These days, Macho's number one. Right. Be only because he, I think he was, he had more to his character than Brett did. But Brett, right. as a wrestler, they were both phenomenal yeah, wrestlers. Yeah, very technical. Like since I like to go back and watch some of the Macho Man stuff, and it's like overrated under to like everybody's like, oh, his outfits and you know his catchphrases. But he was going in the ring. <laughs> no, no, he was Macho Man was incredible in every aspect. He was an incredible athlete. You know, played professional baseball. Um, just ridiculous, like right. uh, totally an innovator in terms of uh, one of the first guys to really fly. Right. I mean, in every way, you know, the double axe handle off the top rope to the outside of the ring. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the elbow. Just, just the way he jumped over the ropes all the time. Yes. Like he, he just was an ex a really, really quality athlete in a way that I think is underrated sometimes. What do you feel about his family? Like, still, do you feel like they're holding him back from the Hall of Fame a bit? Um. You know, yes, to a certain extent. Because um, I've heard stories like they're like, oh, Macho Man wanted all of us to be inducted at the same time. And then McMahon is like, uh, no. <laughs> like, Yeah, and I and I understand both sides. I mean, you know, they are very tied together, Macho Man uh, and his brother, Lenny right. Poffo. And, you know, when Macho Man was first um, picked up by WWE, um, he, Macho Man said he would only go if they also signed his brother. Right, you know, and the two of them went together, and of course, you know, Lenny Poffo had a nice little, you know, low, you know, not not. I don't remember him. Leaping Lenny, <laughs> Leaping Lenny Poffo. Yeah, uh, he wanted to be the genius. Oh, oh, okay, you know, okay. So, um, you know, the, he, he he was a part of it. I mean, obviously, he's not even remotely in the same status as Macho Man, but right. I think whatever the WWE has to do, certainly Macho Man's father deserves to be inducted. Yeah, yeah. Um, Angelo Poffo, but I don't know if Lenny Poffo for the Hall of Fame is a bit of a I reach. Think, I think that's the problem right there. Is it's like you didn't do enough as the genius to, you know. Right, there's too many other people who are better than you who aren't in it. Exactly. So I do understand that dilemma. But, yeah, I think it's really bad that they're holding off because of that one person. Like, I think it's more than that, though. I think Macho Man had a very complex complex relationship with yeah, Vince. So, yeah. I mean, at some point, listen, at some point, he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. There's not even a question about it. What do you think about this whole CM Punk thing? You think he'll come back? You know, there's rumors since he signed a new merchandise deal and everything like that. There's a possibility that, you know, he might return later. later uh, you on. know, I, I, I was the king of he's definitely coming back. And now I still feel he's definitely coming back, but I definitely don't think it's anytime soon. I think he's enjoying too much time, like just chilling out. Yeah, I mean, I, I, and don't get me wrong. I, I think I don't know. I don't know anything about his life, so I cannot comment on a man's life when I don't understand what they do. Right. But from my perspective, not knowing what his body's you know like, and not knowing what his family life is like, but professionally, mm -hmm. sheerly professionally, I think what he's doing is very stupid. 
I, I think this is like, you know, it was cool for a little while, and I'm starting to think like, I just don't. You're but, wasting good years on your body that you're gonna want back. But you don't think that he has a point to stink? Like, you know, he works hard, and everybody else works hard on the roster throughout the year. And then this one person comes in like every year, like, hey, I'm gonna step in for this one big payday, and then I'm out, and then you have to do the minute on lower cards. Yeah, I'm sure that's annoying. Except Punk's gonna really like that when he's doing that. That's you know, <laughs> in, in seven years when Punk comes back yeah. and he's big he's enough to come get his check, yeah. everyone who says Still that, point. Rock put in his work. Yeah, he did. You know, I mean, I'm not saying Rock always got treated like a big shot by WWE. I mean, if you can you can go on the network and watch the uh, Monday Night Wars, the attitude about the Rock, and yep. see the episode mm-hmm. about the Rock, I should say, and see that he was always treated like a big shot, but he also always worked very hard. And the fact is. He rang those cash registers. So that's what happened. I'm sure it's a bummer to a certain degree. But listen, that doesn't mean that what Punk did was the right thing either. And just walking out on all the guys who you help support. You know what I'm saying? There are guys mm-hmm. who rely on CM Punk because he helps deliver money. And he just upped and left. Right. So I don't know. I think, I think there's a flip side to that coin as well. I just think at some point you're going to be like, damn, what was I sitting on? He'll have the rest of his life to be retired. Right. But right now, when you're the hottest, you like to me, it'd be like you dreamed of, of being a rapper your whole life, and then you finally have a hit album, mm-hmm. and you're just like, eh, I'm gonna back out right now. It's like, <laughs> well, why back out right now? Yeah. So many people dreamed to get there, and you did too, and now you're there, and you're deciding not to do it. It just seems a little weird. And to I me. was watching again, WWE Network is actually free right now, free 99 on November. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, they're not paying us, son. See, this is the mark things. I you what, you want to get paid unmarked, to watch that one? Un- unmarked no, things. No, he I have keeps he, he he keeps advertising them. They're not paying us. Oh, oh so why even shout them out? This right. is the mark thing that we do. Like, we, 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 you can't help it. I mean, if you watch yeah. it, you can't you can't <laughs> lie. Exactly. But yeah, I was watching it and um, they were talking. See, you made me forget my point. You were watching. <laughs> it was something on the network yeah, about CM, CM Punk. Punk. Yeah, I was watching his uh, like the time when during Sandy we watched the DVD and I was watching it again this weekend. Um, how he talked about he came back to make a difference. Now it's like. You walked away and you didn't fish making your difference. Like you didn't fish making your point. So now what do you do? Yeah, I, and I I think that's a good point. I, I I don't know. I just think it's a little bit. He kind of took his ball and went home. And I guess I just don't generally have a lot of respect for that move. I, Even though I do have a great respect for CM Punk, I don't respect. I'm taking my ball and going home. I think this is what Vince need to do. He need to send Austin to go talk to CM Punk and figure this out for wrestling. Austin's 31. probably the worst person for this, although no, he went no, through no. it. No, no, he's the perfect person for it. exactly. He went through it. He's the perfect person, to, you know. And this is the guy that CM Punk actually want to have a match with. So hey, Austin, go talk to him. Get I, I got to tell you, I don't, I don't, I don't think we're ever going to see an Austin match again. I really, really, don't. no. I, I don't think he can do it. I, I don't think mm. his body is. I mean, you're talking about a neck injury. Yeah. I, I don't <laughs> think it's something. That you're going to see happen again. I just think it's one of those deals. It's like, not to the same extent, not to compare Edge to Stone Cold, but you're never seeing Edge again. It's it's never happening. No, no, that's, that's possible. That's, so I, I don't think you're ever seeing Austin again either, and I think people just like to entertain it over and over again, but I don't anticipate we'll see Austin and Punk ever happen. Maybe, I hope I'm wrong. Believe me, I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> but I don't think so. So if Austin and Punk isn't going to happen, what would be the perfect CM Punk return match? That's a good question from the non-Mark. So that's a pretty Markish question for a non-Mark. <laughs> yeah. um, One point for you. I would say, ch- 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 well, we've already seen Triple H and Punk. We've already seen Lesnar and Punk. We've already seen Cena and Punk. We've already seen Orton and Punk. Could this be a great introduction for a Sting and Punk? Well, yeah, it would be cool, but I think we yeah. all know the Sting match that should happen is with Undertaker. I don't think there's a reason to... Do you think it happens? Although Punk and Undertaker would be good. That would yeah. be good. That's and under- they always have great matches. And they, they, that, I know that had been a possibility before. And, uh, oh, but they already had their... Did they already have their Mania match? Yeah, yep. And I just read they reports that. I, I forgot they had they the had Mania They had it twice, I believe. No, no. Once it made... They did one Mania match. Sure? He did He did two with Triple H, two with Shawn Michaels, one with Punk. With Punk. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I forgot. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't yes, know. That's hard. Depending where Daniel Bryan oh, is at that time, I think that'd be, yeah. Yeah. you know, because if Daniel Bryan at that point has been back for a while and he's at the top still, yeah. seeing Punk return as a heel who attacks blindsides a baby face Daniel Bryan would be awesome. Because honestly, the matches they had, both of them ended in draws. 
<laughs> like they, they didn't. They didn't. Well, win. they haven't gotten to have a big pay per view match no, since no, they were both on, on top, right? They was on, no, they was both on Raw. Yeah, and those both matches was on Raw, and they never had a definite finish. It was always like a DQ or something. So everybody's always been looking for that. Like we need to know. No, no, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the the match between those guys at when they're at the top of their game needs to happen still. So I think that's probably the most exciting scenario to get. How you think Daniel Bryan will come back? Like how you think? I don't know. I, we were just speculating on that the other day. I'm not sure. I think um, I would love to see him come back to take on Rusev. I think that could be pretty amazing. Mm. Um, I think he should come back and go straight to where he belongs. I think he should come back. If, he, if it was possible, my dream thing would have been, like I told you last year, Royal Rumble, win it, and get his title back at WrestleMania. But that's like so obvious, isn't it? It's like literally, you could just draw that up. Like, he wins it. I, mean, you could, I, mean, you I could, feel like he had that I mean, moment already. Throw, and I mean, then you're going to see him have that match with what? With someone he's already had a match with? Another Cena? No, no. Oh, give, uh, him another and Lesnar. Lesnar needs to give that rub off to somebody. It's not going to be Cena. Lesnar needs to lose to somebody. And his best person to lose to is Daniel Bryan, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. No, that would be cool. I forgot. I wasn't even thinking about the fact if it was still. Because you forget Brock. the title exists because exactly, Daniel, of course. Because Lesnar never shows up to Right, right. Him. No, no. That is, that is a good point. If Lesnar still has the title. Which he will. And then then Bryan. The, the only thing I am saying this, it's only to say that I've been waiting since they, since they didn't let Daniel Bryan and Mark Henry ever finish what they had. Right. I've been waiting to see Daniel Bryan beat the monster. With the yes lock, like I think that has such an impact. I think right. I think that image of him in the middle of the ring at WrestleMania putting that yes lock on a giant and making them tap, I think would be so iconic. So yes, I think Lesnar would totally serve that purpose as well. What do you think they do with Mark Henry at this point? His career is winding down. He definitely should have had the title by now. Well, like, they're not. It's, I'll tell you what he's not doing is getting the title. That's what doesn't seem like something they're doing. Right. Um, Sexual chocolate. I think him and Big Show are having fun. You know, I think they'll have good matches. Those guys are. I wish they didn't rush into them turning yeah, on each other. Yeah. Because I think it could have built, 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 and been mm -hmm. like I would have loved to have seen like seen like a career match at WrestleMania in a steel cage, Mark Henry and, and Big Show. Exactly. I think that would be a special thing. I think to like they've already done this feud before. Yeah. So if you're gonna have this feud again, it has to make be. it the one. Yeah. And have it settle at WrestleMania because they both were like at the end of their career. I think they should have won the tag team titles that night. And let them have their run up to like January, February, and then built so many. Yeah, uh, my my podcast partner on Cheap Heat, uh, Dave Shoemaker, suggested that the reason a lot of things got sped along is because of some other issues that they're having. Mm. So because other people are missing, right. they ended up pushing the gas on things like Mark Henry and Big Show, even though that wasn't quite ready. Right. Um. Because that did seem that night when they turned on each other seemed so rushed. Of, yeah. It was just like we saw they were doing this slow build. Yeah, the slow build throughout. The and weeks, then all of a sudden then, it was like boom. Yep. And I was like, oh, well, I thought we were doing it slow. Yeah. I mean, listen, we, everyone gets on every podcast, of which there are millions, and talks about what we know that's better than what the writers know. And a lot of times we're wrong. But at the same time, these days, it does seem like there's a lot of stuff that they just aren't consistent just, on. Yeah, they're just dropping it or they're not seeing it. And, you know, like Rusev. Like, how do you feel about Rusev winning the title on the WWE Network against Sheamus? I, I mean, that's coming. They're, I mean, they're, I, I saw. I, I knew the second they announced that match. Yeah, after they, they wanted to. It, yeah. They wanted to prove the point of like you can't, you can't miss, miss what's on the network. Yeah, I get it. But I'm talking about like as a build up. Like it was no, just I, I, I would have assumed that day was like boom after the show. Who's that versus Sheamus for the title? I'm like, wait, but they're on Raw wrestling now. All right, cool. Got to watch it again. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a little bit it was a little bit odd. And now where do they go with you know now do they make the feud all about Sheamus trying to get the title get a title back? back? That's possible because I think that in all likelihood the first Rusev lost will be to Sheamus. That's my prediction. Mm. I feel like that's anticlimactic, though. Oh, uh, I th I don't know if it's anticlimactic. I mean, a little bit maybe, but they love Sheamus, right? So I, they are always trying to make Sheamus like the guy. So I just wouldn't be surprised to see that. Do you see Rusev dropping the U.S. title or bringing back the European title? No. 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 Because they actually teased something about it last week on WWE. What, the European title? Yeah. Like in what way? The most forgotten title. And they like, be sure to They it. love trolling. <laughs> With the network, they have a reason to troll everyone and be like, oh, remember this? Remember that? Yeah. I mean, yesterday they put up a video being like, remember Shelton Benjamin? No, it's no, like, no. This was just like WWE, like on the WWE.com, like on like top five thing. No, no, there. but I'm saying still, because the network exists, yeah. they tease everything because right. it they all feeds you, back to the they, network. Yeah, got you. So I, I, I don't think, no. I don't, what would be the point of bringing out the European title? It was weird to have in the first place. It would be exciting for <laughs> one second and then it's like the most adjacent title ever. No one care. 
You know what's funny though? After they did that little thing last week, I was watching uh, SummerSlam '98, and I seen D'Lo Brown come out with the European title. I was D-Lo, like, "Oh yeah!" D'Lo Brown was like the best <laughs> European champion of all time. He held Again, that belt for a while. I, this is a pretty markish thing for a non-mark to say. <laughs> Commenting on D'Lo Brown being the best European champion of all time—that's a pretty <laughs> nuanced, detailed thing to say for someone to say who they're not a big-time mark. I mean, I watch a little bit. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I don't even exactly. remember D'Lo Brown as European champion. <laughs> yeah, I didn't either. I, 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 you know what? It sounds r- I know it when I hear it, but I don't. I never saw it. You know it. what? D'Lo Brown used to be one of my favorite wrestlers, so that's why. You have a special I place. I, I do. Yeah. Well, I get it. I like was D'Lo it the Brown. head shake? It was the head shake and it was the frog splash. <laughs> well, he had a mean frog splash. Yeah, he did. No question about it. Him and, and RVD and Eddie Guerrero. Those are the top three, in my opinion, in the frog splash. I mean, you just named all the frog splashes That's, uh, yeah. of the no, same I'm era. Sure other people tried they it. They have, but I mean, of that Chavo era. Chavo Guerrero tried it. Well, Chavo, <laughs> Chavo did a tribute to Eddie. Yeah. yeah. So, you know. I also strongly recommend, if anyone has time on the network, to watch uh, Eddie versus uh, Ray from Halloween Havoc. I watched that. Gee, yeah, what, what year is it? 98? 97, I believe. 97 Halloween Havoc. Woo! The, when he first came in. And then it was like his first pay per view, and Ray talks about like he showed up and he just thought it was a house show, and then he just seen like all the production. And he's like, "What is this?" And they're like, "Yep, it's a pay per view." He's like, "Oh, great!" No, no, no. T- this is a different one then. Then this yeah. is a year later because this is when they've already been feuding. This oh, okay, is, they've okay, had okay. multiple matches at this point, and it's just a it's just a great match. Maybe it's ninety eight, yeah, but they just have a then. they just have a fantastic match. I, I recommend that one strongly. The no. network's so good. Yeah, it is. I'm You're sorry, it's undeniable. I don't understand. Like, first of all, <laughs> there's two problems with the network. Number one, the expect it's all WWE's fault that they set expectations to be too high. Right. Because frankly, the numbers they're doing are pretty damn good. Yep. You're talking about. People being like, oh, it's not that good. They don't, dude, you're talking about 700,000 people are paying a <laughs> monthly. They're paying a monthly fee when they already get like six hours you, of free programming a week. Already. Yep. So you're already getting hours and hours of free programming every week. And on top of that, they're paying time. That's pretty good. Plus, you can find this on YouTube and, 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 and Google. And right. All there's tons stuff. of other <laughs> options. So considering before the network came out, I still watch wrestling every day for free. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I was more than willing to fork over 10 bucks a month. The question isn't what's failing about the network. It, to me, the question is what's failing about the expectations you made. Right. For the network, because to me, it's doing pretty good. But I mean, it, I will say, the idea of being a wrestling fan and not paying for the network is crazy. And I think most hardcore wrestling fans are paying for the network. You know, when you're being realistic, in America, people love wrestling. It's a big thing. They get a few million viewers a week. Right. But I would suggest that the biggest 700,000 fans are probably subscribing, right? Yep. The top percentage of wrestling fans are paying for the network. So, the problem is, what are they doing to spread the word about the network in other places? Besides so, Raw so guy SmackDown. like so if a guy like Lou wasn't didn't hang out with you, mm-hmm. so he wasn't really into it anymore, but he used to like it and got put on to it, it would be like, "Oh damn, I could go back and watch D-Lo I, Brown." I again? would only pay for it. <laughs> Honestly, I would only pay for it for not only but for the library. That's right. what I'm saying. Because for the ECW library and the WCW, oh. but even and, and I'm saying, library. And, and I think there are a lot of people out there who don't watch the current product who would maybe still pay ten bucks exactly. a month to go watch the yeah. stuff they used to love. Exactly. That's and what I do. <laughs> they don't. They don't reach out enough. I've been saying, but me and Shoemaker keep talking about this. Like, why don't they fork over the money and run a commercial on Monday Night Football? Like you're, you're promoting That's, on Raw every idea. week. Mm-hmm. But why not on Monday Night Football do like a um, a commercial that sort of harkens back to the Monday Night Wars and be like, okay, right now you're watching Monday Night Football. Remember when Monday Nights was about this? And they show quick stuff of Raw and Nitro, and it's like it's all on the network. Exactly. And it also piggies back to make you change back during the commercials to Raw. Like, oh yeah, wrestling is still on. Exactly. A lot of people still forget that wrestling People's, is on especially on Especially with fo- football being so big. It's just everybody... Yeah. Everybody tends to go in another place. I gotta go, guys. I'm needed. Ah, it's okay. Understood. Thank you very much. Thank you for. But I will by. come back again. I, I enjoy talking wrestling with you, dudes. Yeah, I gotta come over in in, in cheat heat. Come stop by cheat heat. Yeah. You just said the name wrong. But besides I said, that, no, I said cheat heat. I think you said like cheat heat. Cheat no, heat. Cheat heat. heat. Hey, Blue Lou <laughs> and the Jew. Hey. Ooh. 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 Special. Thanks. Hashtag. Thanks, guys. <laughs> right, thanks. Man, thanks for coming by. <laughs> Exclusively on datsenough.com. Exclusively on datsenough.com. Ex-